the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Hallelujah. How many of you have enjoyed the ministry of Jakes and Bishop? Please appreciate them. Is this how, is this the seed you are sowing for your own life? <laughs> Hallelujah. God bless you. Thank you. May God cause men to celebrate you like that. Yeah. Hallelujah. Tonight I have a message to the body of Christ. There are some people, God, you know, when you go to NDA, before you begin your training, there are many documents for you to sign. Hallelujah. One of those documents is equivalent to a death sentence. As I'm going now, I'm letting my parents know that I'm going to serve the nation. And forever, I refuse to become a civilian. Hallelujah. And there are certain people when God calls them, He will not use you until you sign those documents because of the kind of anointing and the kind of ministry that you will give. Hallelujah. There are certain people who had ministries in the days of old that you will want to call controversial ministries. Hallelujah. They made trouble everywhere they went. For instance, Elijah was called the troublemaker of Israel. Hallelujah. He discomforted Ahaz again and again. He discomforted Jezebel again and again. And the Bible says, before the day of the Lord, the spirit of Elijah will come once again. That means there will be another kind of disturbance. Hallelujah. And our job as ministers of the gospel is not just to preach and to make disciples. Hallelujah. But to serve the king, listening to the things that he would have to communicate to the body. Please take seriously what I'm about to share with you. Hallelujah. My life is full of encounters. God chose to walk with me and to train me that way. It's not so much of my prayer life. It's not so much of my word life. I don't think it's so much of my hunger for God as it is just the mercies of the God of David. Hallelujah. The Bible says, That which I show you in the secret, declare thou on the mountaintop. Father, I pray that as I communicate the things that you have asked me to do, you will cause your word to come with power. I pray that I'll be able to communicate the heart of the Spirit in a way and a manner that will cause men to believe. Correct us. Change us. Commend us. Build us. Lord, let this message reach the entire body of Christ because this is a message to the body in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Galatians 3. One of the things I have 
um, I have learned over time. Hallelujah. One of the things that I've learned over time to do is to be cautious over thank you over the praises of men hallelujah especially as a minister of the gospel um, because oftentimes men are unable to really understand the heart of God and his pattern of gauging success hallelujah and if care is not taken you can fall into the trap of Receiving commendations from men, whereas you might not be consistent with the blueprint of the Spirit. Hallelujah. So every time men begin to commend me on several things, whatever they consider to be accomplishments, on one hand, I am grateful and I thank God for it. But on another hand, I am quick to find out from God and say, Lord, is this consistent with what you are doing? Is this consistent with your blueprint? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Galatians chapter 3. The Lord began to reveal to me a very tragic thing that is happening in the body of Christ. And the need for immediate action immediate action Galatians 3 verse 1 if you are there say Amen O foolish Galatians this is Paul speaking who has bewitched you that ye should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ had been openly set forth crucified among you Paul is speaking to the Galatian church and he says O oh, foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you, hallelujah, so that you would not listen to the truth, hallelujah. The Lord began to speak to me about a trend of events that is happening in the body of Christ. And many churches Pastors, prophets, apostles, leaders, congregations have been trapped in this tragedy. And the Lord would have us talk about it. Hallelujah. When you put on your TV, the first thing you see is apostle this or that, prophet this or that. Hallelujah. A man of power, a man of signs, a man of wonders going to do this and that. And then people falling on the floor, manifesting under the anointing. And all kinds of ministers with different varieties of shiny suits. Different blends and colors. Attempting to communicate what they believe is coming from God. Hallelujah. Praise God. And many ministers, especially the third and fourth generation of ministers, are beginning to imbibe certain patterns of what they believe to be ministry. Or what they believe to be um, the way a pastor or a minister should lead his congregation and to guide people. And these this tragic patterns or methods are being taught in Bible schools, taught in schools of ministries, conferences, seminars, by different notable men and women of God within and outside the country. And while all of this is happening, the Spirit of God is just watching. Hallelujah. And most of these revelations have come as a result of so-called appearances of Jesus Christ or so-called telepathy, let me call it, to heavenly places. 
And different people have come back with what they believe to be encounters that they had with Jesus Christ. To be encounters of what they believe to be heaven. What they believe to be hell. What they believe to be the realm of the spirit. Hallelujah. And many people have met in their description what they believe to be angels. Who have given them all kinds of messages and patterns and methods. Ah, are you ready for me tonight? Hallelujah. And many books are beginning to be written. And many people are being gullible and running after these things. And Paul writes to the Galatian church. He says, O oh foolish Galatians, who was, and he uses a very interesting word for Christians, bewitched you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord began to talk to me about something that he called the spirit of witchcraft in the body of Christ. Hallelujah. And hear me, whenever you hear witchcraft, for many of us, the first thing you think about is occult, drinking blood and eating someone's flesh. Hallelujah. The word witchcraft means to cause a man to err using the tool of deception so let me let me correct your mindset and understanding because we have only associated witchcraft to the occult and and witches and wizards but paul uses this language for christians the ones he got them born again so you can be sure their salvation was true but he said all foolish galatians who used a teaching to bewitch you Hallelujah. And the Lord began to speak to me about the rampant manifestation of what he calls the spirit of witchcraft. Manifesting on our pulpits. Manifesting in the life of ministers. Genuine ministers. I'm not talking of false ministers. And many do not even know that they have become entangled with the manifestation and the spirit of witchcraft, of manipulation and control. And is spreading like wildfire in the name of mentorship and fatherhood. Many people have received spirits and demons and manifestations of things they cannot account for and explain. And while all of this is happening, the church is getting excited, calling it Rema, calling it growth, calling it revival and the Lord is silent saying what is happening in the earth and all the so called prophets who call themselves oracles whose revelation stops in the second heavens where the spiritual wickedness operates they receive every kind of demonic manifestation and call it the words from God hallelujah And the Lord is disturbed. Because even those who the Bible calls the elect are already being deceived. Are you listening to me? Many people in church are beginning to doubt the things that they believe and the things that they have been taught. Because of certain manifestations, many pastors and ministers and, 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 and all kinds of people all kinds of occultic people who have left their their places of worship and now want suit and agbada come and stand in the pulpit they talk like Christ they display power like Christ hallelujah they prophesy and their prophecies look true But the Bible says in that day we will say, I heal the sick in your name. I cast out devils in your name. I prophesied in your name. He said, but the Lord will say, depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. So open your ears tonight. 
Open your eyes, open your heart, and open your spirit. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us in Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 that and God, you mustn't turn there, just it says, and Elohim said, let us make man in our own image. Hallelujah. It says, and let them, the man, let them have dominion over what? Please turn there quickly. Are you there? Okay, Genesis one twenty six. Let's read one to read. Hold on. Over what? What's the first thing? Second. Third. Over what? And the last one. And everything that creepeth. Was man mentioned there? According to God's word, no man was supposed to dominate another man. Are you listening to me? This is the first manifestation of this spirit of witchcraft that is happening in the body. And guess who the distributors are? The pastors themselves. Are you listening to me? There has been a a manifestation of manipulating people in the body of Christ and ministers rob people of the freedom that God has given them to love God all in the name of pastor, all in the name of father, all in the name of mentor, all in the name of whatever. And they force people to do things. Right now, the average Christian is in bondage. It's called Christian slavery. Hallelujah. Our churches have become prison centers for people. Families have been brought under bondage. Under yoke of oppression and manipulation that comes from so-called pastors. Hallelujah. A father is not at liberty to buy a car for his wife until the pastor gives approval. Parents cannot make decisions for their children until the pastor gives approval. There are many ministries whose account numbers you people come to submit account numbers to people to be able to have track. It's called manipulation and witchcraft. Hallelujah. In the name of not fighting authority. Every man of God, pastor, prophet, apostle, think they have a right to do and undo with members. And we become semi-gods to members. They dare not do anything. I will release a curse upon your life. Hallelujah. A man of God stands up and likes a lady. And the lady has no will and no sense to go and pray and decide. He tells her, I like you, and that is it. Let me tell you something. It's called witchcraft and manipulation. Are you listening to me? And many people are carrying this spirit. They like it. They usurp authority over people in church. People cannot find expression. Hallelujah. An elderly man of over 50 years cannot travel until he tells his pastor. Pastors have literally replaced the place of the Holy Spirit in the life of people. They refuse people from making any decision. The spiritual level of the pastor is what he compels all the members to maintain that level. And if for any reason they are attempting to rise, he creates a system that strangles them and brings them back. Oh foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? When did all these things start creeping 
into the church without the prophets and so-called apostles knowing. Because we are busy taking offerings in church. We are busy looking for money. We are busy doing all the things we are doing. And the Bible says, while men slept. While men slept. The enemy has been waiting for years for the body of Christ to sleep. He said, while men slept. Hallelujah. There are many people. Some of you are here seated. Your pastors have stopped you. There are many of you, this meeting you are coming. You are even coming secretly. Because the day your pastors or your, your mentor or your, your God or whatever you call them. Know that you are coming. They say, so are my teachings not enough to build you? Witchcraft. Demonic teachings that are being taught in church as a result of the insecurity that ministers feel. So they try to create teachings that can accommodate their weakness. In fear of losing members. And so the man does not want to grow. He does not want to know God. He does not want to press into God. And when the wind of the spirit is carrying as many who are interested, he begins to bring all kinds of so-called prophetic teachings. Prophets and apostles have become semi-gods right now. They have the power to free you, take you to heaven, take you to hell, do any kind of thing. Bible says there is no name given on man which any man can be saved. Are you following me now? I'm communicating to you the heart cry of the spirit of the living God. Pastors who suffered complex all their life suddenly find a congregation of gullible members that they can revenge for all their years of complex. And they prove it by putting people in yokes of bondage. And the church, the average member is like a prisoner. And the pastor holds them and begins to pull and sway them according to what he believes is the direction of God. There are many churches where the members cannot see visions. The pastor said, God cannot speak to you except through your pastor. Witchcraft. And manipulation. People are manipulated. All kinds of rubbish prophetic word. If you sow this, if you do this, Isaiah 33 verse 5. Sow 33 nara, 5 kobo. Witchcraft. Hallelujah. A pastor gets up and is tired of his wife and suddenly comes to meet another lady and says, please can you come in or somebody come in with a prophetic word that my wife is a witch. And then the church management sits down and they say, madam go. As they are going, you are seeing the next person. Three days later he comes and no member can talk. It's happening in some of your churches. And none of you can lift your mouth and talk. None of the intelligent people. Because the church has traded their mind and their intelligence for the realm of the spirit. Hallelujah. And so what happens? They begin to create a disciple called sons. Those who will propagate this demonic agenda and all kinds of young people who come and stand, they don't know anything about the word of God, nothing, just touch somebody to fall and they stand up and they are being these demonic agents of propagating these things and they call it ministry. Hallelujah. And then we, the young people, are following stupidly. A young boy with his little disciples too. You two cook for me. You two sleep with me. They, they don't beg. They don't catch all. There's no diplomatic way. They just say it. Selena, let me see you in my house by 11. Full stop. The servant of God has spoken. And then the gullible members go. A man of God comes in a house and he sees a beautiful TV that took a man five years of travail and hard work 
and looks at it and says, take it to my office. It's a prophetic instruction. I tell you tonight as a servant of the living God, the name is witchcraft. I don't care who is doing it. Many of you, the spirit of God has been telling you this is wrong. It's just that you don't have the audacity to speak. Thank God for anointing me because the church will hear this message. I know once again I'll be criticized because of it. <laughs> Somebody asked one man of God one day, why are you always being criticized? And he said, yeah, that's a stupid question. Go and ask your pastors why they are not being criticized. Hallelujah. The church of God right now has become a sin-friendly environment. Demons come and sit down comfortably. And the ma- because, see, because the men of God are the, let me tell you something with Satan. Every time you begin to stand for something, the way Satan takes you is, he makes you a victim of your message and you will not be able to preach it again. The moment you hear a man of God who has been preaching certain things and he cannot preach it again, I tell you under God, he has become a victim of his message. Hallelujah. And all kinds of ladies in different churches have become cheap instruments for sex. That every man of God with his emotional excesses who will never agree that he needs help because he believes he's a new creation suddenly finds out that so I can have desire to sleep with Gladys. And he says, no, no, no. I refuse it. And the next thing by evening is coming to usurp authority Proving from scripture. Hallelujah. And then we carry every kind of message and try to balance and adjust it. We patch here and patch here with one scripture and take the B part of one verse and join with the C part of another verse to make sense according to what we want. Hallelujah. Men of God sit in church and suddenly they see a manifestation of miracles in their members. And they know they are intimidated because, listen, let me tell you, there are two ways to respect a man. One, as a result of his track record of quality leadership. Or number two, because he has created a system that compels you to worship him. Hallelujah. And many men of God do not have a track record of integrity in the presence of their members. So they have to create a system. Don't ask questions. Don't you dare talk. Whatever you see, let your eyes see it there. You are passing and a man is stealing. Stealing from church offering. Hallelujah. You enter the house of a man of God. The next day is a powerful program. And you see him balance and he's watching pornography on the TV. Don't ask questions. He say, Pastor, good afternoon, sir. He say, how are you? Bless you. And then you are shocked. You are surprised. But you cannot talk. Oh, foolish Galatians. Who has bewitched you? And right now, another aspect of that witchcraft is to turn the body of Christ into a therapeutic center. Where they tell people, we all do it. No, there's nobody who doesn't do it. We all go through sad times. We all go through this. We all fall once in a while. Uh, ladies sleep with ladies. Guy, it happens. It's in our human culture. Yet we are the first to preach that we have been translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God's dear son. Yet we are the first to preach that we have been lifted and we are seated in Christ far above. Hallelujah. Are you following me now? There are many people. And then, suddenly, many ministers and many ministries realize that because they are not walking by the principles of God, the required grace and power to move forward and attract, in quotes, the crowd is not there. So what happens? They begin to visit all kinds of witch doctors. Can I tell you? Let me tell you the truth. I tell you as the servant of the living God, 
there are more men of God than you can imagine that visit witch doctors every week in this country. Including those you see on TV. Including some of them that you sit under their ministrations. Hallelujah. Nevertheless, the foundation of the Lord standeth sure. And many of you are always in a hurry. Oh, lay hands on me. Papa, lay hands. Mama, lay hands. You better know what kind of hand you bring your head under. Otherwise, you will step into many of you. It was when certain hands were laid on you. You suddenly saw some things happening in your life. Until today, you are suffering innocently. Hallelujah. There are, there are pastors today and ministers of the gospel. Hear me. There are pastors and ministers of the gospel who use witchcraft and manipulation to literally monitor each and every of their members. You do something, they come and meet you. They call it prophetic revelation. I tell you, it's witchcraft and manipulation. You talk against him somewhere, he will come and tell you. And you say, hey, prophet, this, prophet, that. Please listen to this message because it is very important. This is the voice of God speaking to the church. Hallelujah. And a few who have opened up themselves to God to pick these signals and realize that it's wrong are so afraid of losing members. Let me tell you something. 90% of the ministers around, their number one fear is losing members. And so they cannot preach certain truths. Although they know that this is what God is saying. Although they know that this is wrong. What if I preach? No members, no offering. No offering, no expansion. Or no food for their belly. According to how diligent they are in, in spending the, the Lord's money. Are you listening to me? And while all of this is happening, listen to me. The devil is advancing and penetrating into churches. Are you listening to me? Different kinds of manifestations that happen in churches, all in the name of power. I tell you, most of these things, they are called occultic pacifism. Where higher demons come to pacify other demons. And many people feel happy. And then they go, but are you getting blessed? I know I'm offending you. I know some of you are not happy. But I rather serve the living God. I rather serve the living God. The name apostle is not a title. It's an office. It's a controversial office. I'm not looking for fame and power. I rather serve God in truth than to serve men. Are you following me now? O oh, foolish Galatians, who has caused you to err by using deceptive teachings? Hallelujah. I remember a particular lady who a man of God had been sleeping with her again and again. And every time the guy went to church, you would see the power of the Holy Ghost. And the lady was amazed. Sometimes right from the bed there, right from the bed, you wake up and bath and go for the meeting. And as he's stepping in, genuinely, he had never gone to any native doctor. And you would see the manifestation of God. And prophecies, quoting scripture after scripture. And the lady was convinced that maybe God exempted him because he was a man of God. So God gave you immunity. Hallelujah. And one time she came for my meeting. Then we were on campus. And I thought how that there is a difference between the gift of the Spirit and the fruit of the Spirit. Are you listening to me? I thought that the gift of the Spirit is not equal to spiritual maturity. So that a man is operating in gifts does not mean the man is spiritually mature. And the lady found the secret and went back and told him. And he warned her and banned her. 
that you should never come for my meeting again. And he said, there is no man of God that doesn't sleep around except they don't want to tell you. I tell you as the servant of God under the Lord most high that I serve. If, you, if there is any lady here that knows that as ministers we sleep with you, stand up. Hallelujah. Listen. I'm not preaching this to condemn pastors or to condemn people. I'm preaching this to show you that Satan is entering the body of Christ. We come every Sunday putting on our suit. But if we are not cheerful, Satan wants to abort the revival that God is bringing. Are you following me now? Have you not been disturbed at the caliber of young ministers that are coming up? Go around campus. And see the next set of young ministers that are supposed to be taking over what God is doing. Arrogance beyond imagination. Indiscipline beyond imagination. Lack of control. Lack of every kind of thing. They watch their TV and see it and write it and get up and go and do it. The spirit of witchcraft. That's the first message tonight in the body of Christ. Are you listening to me? And there are many people operating under this spirit and do not know. See, let me tell you the truth. You've got to choose whether to serve the Lord Most High. A day is coming. Hear me. Jesus Christ is coming back for his church. Are you listening to me? A day is coming. For those of you who have listened to all kinds of godless messages. That Jesus is not coming because of this. And they have compared scripture to scripture. Let me tell you. I have seen a vision of the rapture. Jesus is coming. Whether or not you believe it. Because I have stopped assuming that everybody in church believes that we are going. If you don't believe it. When we are leaving. I will show you where my Bible is. Because you will desperately need it. When the church leaves. I assure you, I assure you, you will need it. It will become the only road map. Are you listening to me? Right now, the issue of getting souls born again in church is not even an issue again. Have you noticed it? And um, This is the manifestation of the spirit of witchcraft. Everybody just says, well, if you are not, the, well, just amend your ways. Because we do not want to hurt people. So, Satan is helping us to design a sin-friendly church. You come as you are, but you do not stay as you are. Somebody gets born again. Two weeks. The next thing, they ordain him a pastor. They go and give him a whole branch with all the unrenewed Babylon. Half salvation, half Babylon. And suddenly when he stands and finds out that in the first service only ten ladies came and he remembers that only two weeks ago he was sleeping. Suddenly what happens? Let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. Let me teach you the correct gospel. Before God interrupted or not interrupted, he brought this thing. The, I, I plan to teach seven teachings in the body of Christ that need correction and balance. That's the next series we are going into. Seven teachings in the body of Christ that require correction and balance. They are not wrong. But if we continue that way, let me tell you one of it. One of it is that the moment you get born again, hallelujah, all things are okay, all things are alright, whatever it is, you are above, listen to me. And listen very, very well. When you get born again, hear me, when you get born again, your spirit is reunited to the spirit of God. Are you following me now? But your mind, your soul, where all the junks, the, the strongholds that Satan has put, let me tell you, is still there intact. Are you listening to me? Why will God give you the Holy Ghost? Why will he give you tongues? Why will he give you the word of God? Why will he send you to a church to be blessed if everything is okay? Are you listening to me? And as a result, what happens? There are many people 
who sit down and say, ah, there's nothing wrong. Me, I'm thinking well. But you are seeing anger in your life. You need help. You are rejecting it. I don't, you are, you are killing and fighting everybody. This is a manifestation you do not like. Hallelujah. We jump and say everything is alright. And we go back and demons oppress us. You wake up and struggle. And you just get up and keep quiet. Are you listening to me? We jump and we say you are born again. But you are dying of lust. Suffering from pornography. Masturbation. All kinds of things. We sugarcoat everything. And come on Sunday. Including men of God. Are you listening to me? You know I'm not lying. You know I'm not lying. Because it's happening to a number of you here. You know that I'm not lying. Except you do not want truth. And you do not want change. Hallelujah. I was told of a situation where a minister, a minister, I mean a, a, a civil service minister now, was running after a particular man of God. You know why? Because the man bought a new jeep and called the prophet to come and dedicate it. When the prophet came and saw the new jeep, the prophet said, you mean you just bought this? He said, yes. And he said that he wants to have a prophetic match with it because just like they went round Jericho seven times. See, the Bible is a prophetic book. You can make it preach any gospel you want. Are you listening to me? You can twist it to preach anything you want. And the guy went on his Jericho march never to return. And the man waited, car that he bought. And the next thing, how many times have you seen police chasing ministers? Give me back my car. What did you do to me? Give me back my wife. Give me back my children. Hallelujah. Right now, to receive, I mean, it's terrible to receive if Reuben comes now and says, man of God, I have a problem. They say this problem requires come with a, a prophetic seed. According to the type. Oh yes. Oh yes. Oh yes. And we drop all kinds of baskets in church. You want a, a fair guy. This is the basket. You want any our own. This is the one. You just want to marry anything. This is your own. Hallelujah. And while all of this is happening, listen, while all of this is happening, the ministers stand and have no conscience and they strangle and rob their members of every one naira and one kobo and finish everything to the point that people, I'm not saying these people did not give willingly. They gave by manipulation. And while that happens, then the invited minister who raised the offering and the man of God starts fighting. I raised five million, you give me five hundred thousand, are you joking? Add something. And this is what they are discussing behind stage. There is a kind of spiritual slavery that Satan wants to bring to the church that if we don't attack it now, it will be worse than the colonial slavery. Are you listening to me? There are many ladies today that have refused to marry because their pastor has disapproved everybody. Until he gets his prophetic revelation from whatever. Anybody that comes and they threaten you with cause or they say you will not give birth. The Bible is called the most sure word of prophecy. To the point that many parents are, many ministers have made parents who are having jobs that is taking care of their families. 
They have made them to leave those jobs and resign and say, come and work in the ministry. How will I fend for my family? Are you joking? Are you joking with the word of the prophet? And then the family sell their possessions. Some of your parents are victims like that. That's when you started suffering till today. Are you listening to me? Ministers manipulate parents to sell their whole company and their whole estate and carry the money and come and sow. All in the name of him, 21 days, there is a prophetic miracle coming. From that date, it's five years now. At least if the word of God is true. Read your Bible. Every time the prophet spoke and they obeyed, something happened. Hallelujah. Many homes are being broken right now because prophets are coming. The day a prophet enters a house, he comes to scatter the house. Suddenly you come and he just sees and comes to touch the lady. You, you are Regina. She's the one behind all of this. Why are you people suffering? And then they leave the family with more confusion. And they tell them, come and meet me in my office. What happens? They have joined the key of the slavery. And then he starts pulling them. Intelligent people have become victims of wickedness. Do you know why many people do not attack this gospel? Because if you are a pastor, this business is highly lucrative. Highly lucrative. Imagine if I use the prophetic to know how much you people have. Imagine those miracle services where you have people full blue roof in and out. And I force everybody to do a prophetic emptying of account. See, see, listen, listen, listen. The way I will be serious, you will never know is witchcraft. Because there are already people falling down. And I will say just like you are seeing, stand up, stand up, package a seed. Then I will package my own. Is he not coming to me? Brothers and sisters, as you are laughing, I want you to know that this is a serious thing in the mind of God. Hallelujah. Sorry, the water. And then we now have the recent outbreak of, of all kinds of water. Hallelujah. Prophetic water. Apostolic water. We get people born again by giving them water. We get people healed. Every kind of thing. Hallelujah. A man of God opens the water, spits in it, and gives you the prophetic water. And with gladness and joy, you want a husband. You take the man of God's prophetic water. Hallelujah. And all kinds of things. They give members all kinds of dangerous and demonic therapy. Get up by 12.30 exactly. Stand naked at the left side of your corridor. Make sure you are naked. Anoint yourself. Anoint your this. Anoint your that. Come on, please. What, what taught the church this madness for God's sake? What kind of madness is this? Hallelujah. I watched on TV one time um, 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 what they call this this Nestle bottle it was anointing and, and, um, what they call it uh, anointing oil this man of God opened this thing and told him open your mouth this actually opened and he turned this thing and said drink it the reason why you are not angry is because it didn't happen to your mother or your sister or somebody and you see old women who came for a touch and then when they do it and the man is not healed, many ministers preach all kinds of messages and say, left for me, there's nothing wrong the flow of power from my direction. If it does not touch you, you do not believe. Listen, if Jesus will require you to do a lot of things before he will touch you, then he is not love. And what he's doing is not called mercy. Everybody Jesus healed in the Bible was not born again. Let's take responsibility and say there is something wrong. We have not contended for those realms of power and go back to the secret place rather than giving lousy and flimsy excuses. A man sows one million. 
You told him when he sows one million in two months, his wife will be pregnant. The wife did not get pregnant and they came. He said, what happened? Did you sleep with her the day I told you? He said, yes, sir. I, I did everything the way. Look at a man and his wife being controlled by, by the stupidity of ministers. God gave me a prophetic word. Sleep with your wife only on the 15th. Come on, no, nobody will bring that nonsense to me. Hallelujah. And then we have the era of stickers. Prophetic, prophetic uh, stickers that drive demons, drive witches, drive wizards, drive bad luck, drive bad husband, drive bad wife. Oh God. And people put these things in unbelievable places. Are you concerned? This is not the kind of gospel that came from the generals. Hallelujah. Very soon men of God will put prophetic shoe licking prophetic service. Look at the look at the newspaper that carried the report of the man that slept. I think he slept with all the ladies in his church. They had a vigil naked. Who who followed it? It's on paper. Night vigil. Once you get to the church, you do a prophetic removing of your clothes, and and you prophetically become insane. Hallelujah. And then we have stickers. The blue one is 5,000. This one solves only marital problems. The, the red one is for business. is 9,000. The, the, the pink one, the yellow one, is for academic challenges. It has not been working. And many of the people that give testimonies, you don't know them. The day you and all the people in your community where there's nobody that testifies that is working. Listen to me. God is angry at some things. And if we do not rise up, I'm not just saying this to expose people and to talk, but somebody must speak. Hallelujah. The spirit of witchcraft manifesting in the church. And then we have prophetic revelation. Your name is Reuben. You just graduated from computer science, from maths. You're, you want to marry. <laughs> Hallelujah. You are in a relationship. There is this and that that you have. And people clap. Wow! And then, and then, listen, listen. And then the gullible members just sit down helpless. Oh, help me. Hey, help me, oh, help me. And the man will say, I, I do, you are not serious. Help me, help me. Listen, listen, listen. If this is what we want to call church, then a time will come Christians will stop going to church. Because a church will become a place of bondage that the government must come in. Right now, the government and law courts are beginning to be involved in church issues because of the catastrophe that is happening. Any young man just gets up and feels he's anointed and calls one guy there, calls one guy and says he's going to join them in, in holy matrimony. The parents do not know. Are you following me now? They ran away from their parents and came and met any quack prophet somewhere. He doesn't ask where their relatives are. Doesn't ask whether the parents permitted the wedding. By the prophetic unction upon me, I hereby pronounce you husband and wife. And then they find out that there See, many people are suffering. The Bible says, he that breaks the hedge, the serpent will strike. The men of God are getting richer the innocent church members are getting poorer. To an extent that when people are coming to church, they keep other money that they need for the week in the car. Because they know the one they are coming to church with must finish. Must finish. 
There have been projects from the day that church started and it will never end. There's not a day that people can say, we thank God that by the sure mercies of the God of David, this project has been completed. A project that would have been completed five years ago, they are still collecting offering for it till today. And while we do all this jamboree, we tell people to shout all kinds of things. We tell people to cry all kinds of things. We tell people to scream all kinds of things. We tell members, carry your chair, put on your head, jump up, sit down, put this, and, and just say, I'm moving forward. And you, you see a, a congregation of, of unbelievably um, 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 mentally, and, and you see, this is how the world is watching TV. <laughs> and somebody says, honey, for heaven's sake, come and see what these Christians are doing. The church has become a place of utter confusion where hopeless people come to meet a hopeful deity called the pastor or the prophet or the this and that. They give you admission. You are supposed to leave for Canada tomorrow. You cannot go because your mother has not reported to the prophet. And they must say the prophet is busy and he travels. So you cancel the trip. Because the prophet must give his prophetic blessings. Otherwise it will not rain. And there is a prophetic covering that only him can give. Come on. The devil did not kill you before you started joining that church. Don't let anybody manipulate you with witchcraft. Deception. In the body of Christ. And people are getting comfortable with it. And the tragedy is this. Innocent people who used to preach truth. Are you listening to me? started attending meetings where they invite them and they invite the fake man of God too. Ministering. Apostle Joshua Selman. Prophets, this and that and that. Slams Zaria in a three-day powerful crusade. And what happens? Satan begins to use genuine people to endorse those who are manifesting these things. So that when you see your pastor who you know truly loves God and you see him in company of other people, you say, ah, this means this guy is also genuine. Mm. But that's what happened in the book of Acts. When Paul entered, a lady who was operating by the spirit of divination, when she saw Paul, what did she say? She said, these are holy men of God. Was she lying? She was seeking partnership. Paul discerning. He cast that devil from her. And what happened? The Bible says the owners who manipulate her, they packed out of business. Just like many ministers who pack out of business because of this message. Because I prayed to the Lord, I said, Lord, let this message go far. If not because men of God have been eating your father's salary or your mother's salary month after month, you would have been better out of the way you are living. Everybody comes. The, the moment you have breakthrough. And then the surprising thing is, when any member of your family dies, you will never see them. Because they don't believe in all of those things. They, they don't have a gospel to preach for dead people. They don't have a gospel to preach for somebody who has been fired from his job. They only have a gospel to preach. And all the spiritual sons and ladies are handsome guys and beautiful ladies. When they look at you and you don't look like it, they say, no, you are not my... You have to represent uh, Papa. Lord, have mercy upon your body. Because the Lord is sad at what is happening. The church has become a business venture. A business venture. Are you listening to me? Everybody just does every kind of thing. When the pastor wants to promote anybody he likes to get gain, he will say, now, this person has started selling fuel. His filling station is called RW. All the members of this church must, it's a prophetic instruction, patronize him. What is the meaning of that? What is the meaning of that? Why must I buy fuel in RW? In RW? I can choose total. What if total is my own filling station? I leave it and go and patronize this. Because of the commission. And then the person comes to say, Papa, since you prophesied to me, doors have been opening anyhow at the expense of people. 
We are going to pray this night. Oh. We are going to really pray this night. Are you following me now? Witchcraft and manipulation. Oh foolish Galatians. Who has bewitched you? Who has bewitched you? Who has bewitched you? Devilish teachings. Godless teachings. Who has bewitched you? We package teachings that keep members in slavery. In slavery. Again and again. Because the more they are in slavery, the more we benefit. Hallelujah. Let me show you another thing that the Lord showed me. Leaders, our retreat has started this night. We have already started our retreat. Tomorrow we are just continuing. Hallelujah. John chapter 2. Please follow me closely. The Lord began to speak about another thing. John chapter 2. Thank you, Jesus. Can you just pray in tongues for one minute? And say, Lord, we thank you because your word is sanitizing the church. Lord, we love you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In John chapter 2, we start from verse 7. This was the first miracle that Jesus performed. I hope you know whatever is first gives you a pattern. Are you following me now? Let's examine the first miracle that Jesus performed. John 2 verse 7. Jesus said unto them, listen. Let's even start from 1. I'll read first. And the third day, there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee. And the mother of Jesus was there. And both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. Are you following me now? And they what? They, they lacked wine. Look at me. They called people for marriage. But they lacked wine. Hallelujah. They called people for marriage. Yet there was no wine to feed them. Read on. And Jesus said unto her, Woman, Woman, what have I to do with thee? My hour is not yet come. Listen, listen. His mother said unto thee, The mother said unto thee, Please follow me. Whatsoever he tells you to, So, there is a relationship between Doing and servants. When the mother wanted something to be done, who did she talk to? Servants. Follow me. Verse 6. And there were six water pots of stone after the manner of the purifying of the Jews containing two or three fur kings apiece. And Jesus said unto them, Fill the water pots with water. And they filled them to the brim. And he said unto them, Draw some out now and bear it unto who? The governor. So we understand that that feast had some top people called what? Governors. Hmm. And they bore it. And when the ruler, the first question is, how can a feast have a ruler? Look at me. Is a feast such a big issue that a man will become a ruler? Are you following me now? There were people who called themselves governors. Rulers. And innocent people came for the wedding, but they had no wine. Why didn't Jesus talk to the rulers? He left the rulers and went and he was dealing with the servants. Please, are you following me? I'm giving you a revelation to the body of Christ. Watch this. Let's keep reading. Hmm. And when the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine, what happened? And knew not from where it was. Listen. The rulers knew nothing about the new miracle. And the new things that Jesus was doing. Only who? Servants. Now listen to what your Bible says. 
read it in bracket it says but the servants who drew the water knew this is a mystery that is happening in the body of christ are you following me now there is a feast there are great men they were honored because they are the men of timber and caliber isn't it they are the ones that know the happenings of god and the bible says wine had finished and they were still deceiving people claiming as if the wedding was going on fine but then what happened jesus was busy dealing with the servants because jesus was touched that there were people and there was no wine for them and jesus said i cannot deal with these rulers again they are deceitful people the spirit of witchcraft and he switched and said servants will you do whatever i tell you to do he said yes he said now let me begin to walk with you this is the prophetic mystery of what is happening in the body of christ the bible says when they started testing the new wine the rulers felt embarrassed because this was not the kind of wine they planned to give the people are you following me now the people had been drinking every kind of premature wine suddenly they started tasting a wine that was balanced and well brewed and the people asked they say ah where was this wine the bible says the rulers did not know where the wine came from but those who were servants who were not busy looking for title but were interested in doing the bible says the servants knew please are you following me now the revelation and the moves of God that he's doing. Amos chapter 3. Let me show you some scriptures. Revelation will only be for servants in this season. Not for lords. Not for them who usurp authority. Because the moves of the spirit that he's bringing upon the body. Amos chapter 3. If you are there, please say amen. amen. Verse 7. Surely... The Lord God will do nothing, but he revealed his secret unto who? Stop. Don't forget about the prophet. He reveals his secrets to who? Men of God. He reveals the secrets to his servants. Whatever version says son, just forget about it. That's a wrong interpretation. His servants. So, when God wants to do a thing, while those who believe they are the custodians of revelation, who are yoking people, those who are saying, Lord, is only by grace that I have to serve. Would you reveal to me your counsel? The Bible says the Lord will do nothing, but he will go to those people and reveal his secrets. Are you following me? Revelation chapter 1. Something is happening in this place. We held you most high. Are you there? Revelations 1, verse 1. Let's read. 1 to read. The revelation of Jesus Christ. Stop. It's called the revelation of who? So, this is Christ wanting to reveal himself. Is that correct? But let's see those who got it. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show who? To show who? Is it in your Bible? The revelation that God gave. And he gave that this mystery that I'm bringing about myself to the body, I will hide it from those who believe they are the ones who are the men of God and yoking the body. He told the Spirit of God, go and search around the earth. When you find a servant, reveal it to him. Are you following me now? Are you getting something? The spirit of servanthood. The spirit of servanthood. Ecclesiastes chapter 10. We have always quoted this scripture, but let me show you a mystery. Hmm. This is the prophecy that will be happening. We have always seen it in a wrong way, but I will show you something. Ecclesiastes 10. Please, are you there? Verse 7. If you are there, say Amen. If you are there, say Amen. Let's read. One to read. Hold on. Who are those riding on the horses? Who are those riding on the horses? Who are those walking afoot? This is what will happen. It says servants. Because when you read in Revelation chapter 19, it says the person who was upon the horse, meaning the servant, was the Lord himself. And only those who will be servants 
who will be allowed to ride on this horse of revelation and glory that is coming upon the body. Are you following me now? He said, I see a mystery. Why is it that servants are allowed to ride on horses while those who call themselves princes are walking afoot? This is the dethroning that the Spirit of God will do by himself. Listen, you will see a manifestation of servants that will make you fear. They will catch revelations and walk in the anointing of the Spirit. And all the people who claim to be lords, you enter a church and you see the pictures of a man as if it's a photo studio. He's the Lord Almighty of this cathedral. Hmm. Are you listening to me? The tragedy I've seen in the church is many men are looking for the works of God and the power of God, but they do not want to know God. Are you listening to me? Psalms 103 verse 7. Psalms 103 verse 7. The Bible said he showed his ways to Moses, but to the nation of Israel, they only saw his acts. Are you listening to me? And what we are displaying in church is the acts of God, which is wonderful. But I tell you, the revelation that will last according to what God showed me is those who knew his way. Why did he show Moses his way? But then he shielded his way from the nation of Israel. Joshua chapter 1. Verse 1. Are you there? Joshua chapter 1. Let's read. 1 to read. Now the Lord said unto Joshua. Go ahead and read. He said, Moses, my servant. Are you following me now? He says, now the Lord said unto Joshua. He said, Moses, my servant. So God called Moses who? That's why Moses saw the ways of God. While the rest, Israel was busy seeing his act. Moses said, although I have seen fame and power, although I have spoken to God visibly, I choose to be the servant of God. And God said, I will show you my ways. But today that stand afar, they will just see the motions of the spirit without understanding the mind of Christ. He said, Moses, my servant. Please, are you getting blessed tonight? This is a prophetic message to the body. Those who usurp authority. Matthew 20. Let's see what Jesus Christ said there. Jesus Christ made a very powerful statement. That I don't want us to play with. If you have a Bible, a red letter edition, you will see the writings of Jesus in red letters. 20, verse 21. Now very quickly because I want us to pray. This was when, listen, and he said unto her, let me read. What will thou? She said unto him, grant that these my two sons may sit one at thy right hand. And one at thy left. So the woman came and she wanted her son. The mother of James and John. What did she want? Authority. Power. She wanted them to be the rulers. And Jesus said, ah, you don't know what you are asking for, oh madam. Let's jump to verse 24. When the ten heard it, they were moved with indignation. Why? They were angry. They were saying, all of us are trying to be servants. And here you are trying to make arrangement to lord it over us. Are you following me now? When they heard it, they were angry. This is the message of Jesus to the body of Christ. Verse 25. But Jesus said unto them, He said unto him, Ye know that the princes, you see why the princes are walking afoot? Are you linking this scripture now with Psalms 103? Ye know that the princes, what do they do? Of the Gentiles exercise what? Dominion over them. And they and they that are great exercise what? Authority over them. But here is the word of the Lord to the body. But it shall not be so among you. But whosoever will be great among you, let him be your... That's the word here. Yes, servant. That's where some versions say minister. You see where the word minister comes from? A minister is a servant. Not a lord. You subbing authority in the name of whatever. 27 and whosoever will be chief among you let him be your let him be your 
verse 28 he said even as the son of man came not to be ministered unto come on offering razors come on prophetic connections and all kinds of things he says the primary i'm not saying you should not bless i hope you understand the balance all of these things that i talk about when you begin to emphasize one truth you will soon fall into witchcraft the second message of christ to the body of christ is that those who will receive revelation and walk with the lord in the seasons to come are those who will accept to be servants hallelujah do you believe this let me show you an interesting scripture philippians chapter 2 we have taught on this scripture but the lord opened my eyes by revelation Philippians chapter 2 Shikapakura Sibalala Mambroski Prashti Brashta Ato Sete Masimala Cambria Zizebekete Baladabosh Tembroska Patayana Are you in Philippians? Philippians 2 The Lord showed me a mystery. Verse 5. Let this mind or this mindset be in you, church of the Lord Jesus Christ, that was in Jesus Christ. What is the mindset? Who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with who? Now, listen. Although Listen, listen, please. Jesus did not think that when he lets people know that he is God, it will be that he is insulting God and it's not true. Is that correct? And he said, let this mind be in you. That means, please come. Come. That means like God, this guy should, I should not think it robbery when this guy can stand and hold shoulders with me. Are you following me now? He said, let this mind of servant would be in you. That God Almighty, Jesus was not afraid to come and stand and say, we are one. Does that mean Jesus disrespects the Father? Please, are you following me now? But in our churches right now, if this guy should come and stand and say, good afternoon, Josh, I would think it is what? Robbery. Are you following me now? You see the mindset God is saying, let it be in us. He's saying, do not think it robbery when you stand and say, look, we are not the same. Oh yeah, get down, kneel down. Are you supposed to? Come on, my friend. You don't know the level of anointing that I'm walking in. The Bible says Jesus was so confident that God understood and that he had the servant heart. In other words, this was the culture of heaven. It was not robbery. So Jesus could say, I and my father are one. Hallelujah. There are people, even if their mother and father calls them Joshua Selma, they look and say, Mommy, let me tell you, there is difference between the spirit and ministry. Apostle Joshua Selma. Robbery. Are you following me now? So, there are many, there are many megards in church called pastor watching against those they want to call armed robbers, those who want to rise to their position. And the Bible says Jesus did not count it to be robbery when he said, I am equal with God. In church today, we believe that the greatest is the man of God. And we even have something called chief servant. In English, we call that oxymoron. That's nonsense. Hallelujah. Chief. Then you lie to us that you are a servant. No, sir. You are either a chief or you are a servant. Chief servant is the way of trying to say among the servants, I am the greatest. Is that not the same thing we are talking about? Do you know that the highest cadre of the angelic realm, they are called messenger angels. That's the title you give to great angels. Hallelujah. 
The highest of the angelic realm is called, they are called messenger angels. Are you listening to me? And then after the messenger angels, we have the seraphs. The seraphs are the heads of the messenger angels. And then we have the cherubims. Are you listening to me? Before man was created, after the cherubims, we have God himself. You see how Satan, who was called the anointed cherub, that means among the cherubs, he was the one who was separated. Are you following me now? Consecrated. And then the, when God created man, the head of the cherubs became the woman. Are you following me now? And then the head of the woman is the man. And then the head of man is God. And what happened? Satan said, no way. No way. He wouldn't want to be a servant. And so he said, I will exalt myself above the stars of God. And as a result, what happened? God judged him and he came down. Right now we have people whose ambition is to lift themselves. See, let me tell you, there are many nonsense that are unnecessary in church. There are many churches that when you go, you see a big throne kept somewhere. I'm not talking of the Anglican communion. It's a system. Are you following me now? Are you listening to me? I schooled in a seminary and I like their system. You see a big chair somewhere. When the man of God enters, you just sit down. All hail. King. The rabbi of the ages. And then he walks. And looks at the members. And says, I know you people won't understand. You poor children. And what he's sharing is nonsense. Nonsense. Not even scriptural. And he says, what I'm sharing with you is deep. Witchcraft. I hail you most high. I hail you most high. I truly hail you most high. The Bible says before the day of the Lord, the spirit of Elijah will come once again. And this is what is happening in the body of Christ. Those who will walk in revelations. Hear me, friends. They are those who will be ready to become servants. Am I saying you do not honor people? Did we not teach on the law of honor here? Hallelujah. That's why the ministers are seated there. We will never have a revelation where we we'll keep the ministers in a congregation. Because honor is to whom honor is due. Am I saying you will not sow into the life of people? But where it becomes manipulation, I'm telling you it is witchcraft. And hear me, the judgment of God is beginning from his house. Many of you will see things that will surprise you. You will see ministries that will pack up and it's not demons. The hand of the Lord itself will close down many ministries because of the manipulation and the satanism they are bringing. You know why? Because in the church, wine has finished. There is a transition. I tell you, the old wine that they have been intoxicating people with that is leading them to error, God himself has made that wine to finish. And in the secret place, there are servants that God is already giving instruction. He's saying, begin to fill pots of water. Fill pots of water. For very soon, I will turn it into the new wine that will characterize my move for the next season. And the rulers are there. Church as usual. Business as usual. Church marketing as usual. And the servants are saying, Lord, what will you do? Mary said, because you are a servant, whatever he tells you to do, do it. I will go wherever you lead me. Yeah. I will go whatever you tell me. I will say whatever you want me to know 
I will know men who will not be ashamed he said Paul a servant we have taught that servants are the caricature I have shown you from scripture in the book of Revelation he said the revelation of the Lord Jesus that he gave that they should only what I hope you know revelation is an unveiling of that which has been previously hidden and God is about to open some scrolls that have been hidden but the spirit of God is searching for servants and he's he's telling the Holy Ghost has been told by the Father move around the earth anywhere you find servants call them tell them join those who are changing water to wine begin to join there is a new army the rulers are there jumping suddenly they will start testing a wine they know nothing about and they will be angry they will attempt to persecute the servant but the wine will be too sweet men will not deny it this is the word of the lord to the body of christ let me tell you there is coming right now all across this nation all across Syria, the true servants of God are busy talking with God while the rulers are there raising offerings, making themselves rich. The wine has finished. Many churches are just doing the motions. I bring you a prophetic word. The old wine has finished in many churches in the wedding of Cana, the first miracle. Bible says, and the wine finished. But the rulers were busy sitting serve more wine but the wine had finished jesus christ was in that meeting and they did not honor him that's what is happening in many churches is it not interesting that jesus was sitting in the congregation while the rulers were the ones on the high table is that not what is happening in our churches jesus is somewhere sitting in the congregation and there are rulers conducting the wedding And the wine finished. They were so complacent. The wine finished. When the wine finished, the rulers did not even know it was the servants that went to the Lord. They went to Mary. And Mary took them to Jesus and said, look, whatever. Jesus was agitated. How can men come and there is no wine? And the wine was not sweet. And he said, because you are servants. You humbled yourself and you came. Are you ready to do what I will tell you to do? Will you join these people? He said, no. We are servants. He said, now go and get six. Six vessels. And fetch water. Many many of the rulers will pass and just see water. The miracle has not happened. The water, the Bible says to be washed by the, regener- the washing of the water. Many of these servants are on training. You are criticizing them. They are not hearing the chips yet. Some don't have crowds in their churches yet. They are the servants. Because very soon, there will be an exchange of the old wine and the new wine. Many men are walking in integrity. And they are suffering because of their integrity. Are you listening to me? Many of you have been misled in your churches. Because you spoke and you stole and money didn't come. They have insulted you that you do not have faith. Hold on. There is an exchange in the spirit. Those who will dare to hear the voice of the master. And say Lord whatever you will tell me to do I will do. And God says go ahead. Begin to fetch. He's looking for them. The spirit of God comes to Zaria. And he starts moving church to church. Campus to campus. He finds a servant. And the revelation comes. And he brings him. He comes here, this guy is a lord and he goes back He finds a servant I tell you there is a separation of servants And the time will come When you will see men walk in power Walk in revelation Authentic revelation For now The serpents of Pharaoh Are still dangling around the palace Soon you will see the miracle When the snake, the rod of God Upon the hand of his servant Moses will swallow up every other doctrine. This will happen in the body of Christ. A day will come, Babalao will wear Agbada and sit down and stand to preach and because his servant is seated, he will fall down and drop dead right there. It will happen. It will happen. It will happen. Wherever you lead me, I will go. Listen. 
if you are here deceased from pride and arrogance are you listening to me especially if you have the, the call of God upon your life when you know that your man of God or whoever politely seek room to tell them that this is not the way of God the spirit of God will not strive with man forever God will first move in the ministry of mercy if it does not work the sword of judgment will come because that is what he did in the days of Pharaoh he told Moses politely go tell Pharaoh you are putting my people in bondage let my people go let my people go ten times Pharaoh did not hear and he said all right I will not talk to you again suddenly by night the Bible says the angel of death moved around crossed over Goshen and went to the city and began to smite the firstborn is the most valuable asset of a man are you listening to me many people will lose many things in the body although they are men of God but the spirit of God will not contend with man for too long and I welcome you to be part of what God is doing by maintaining the spirit of a servant are you listening to me I prayed to the Lord I said Lord keep me let me be a servant a servant does not mean you are wearing t-shirt instead of suits no that's just simplicity that's not humility but that you come to a point where you realize that everyone God has called us to serve you are you listening to me yes you will bless us yes you will respect us but the primary ministry is to serve you to pray for you to fast for you to tell you the truth like i'm telling that's why before you come the ushers clean the seat for you because we are servants are you listening to me that's why until everybody is seated the ushers don't sit down we are servants that's why when we stand to minister and there are people standing we tell them come and occupy the seats god has not called us just to be lords and king of kings apostle joshua selman the president of koinonia pastor jakes pastor stanley let me tell you something many of you are already receiving a wrong spirit you have collected a wrong button and you are running tonight we are going to pray and you are going to say lord help me have mercy on me are you listening to me oh tonight we are going to pray because many of you are already getting attracted you like it you like it you like the suits you like everything you like seeing people worshiping you you enjoy it. that ecstatic feeling of relevance is what is driving many pastors and many people but wherever you lead me yeah, i will go it's wherever you lead me i will go Oh Lord, let me not become one of those rulers and those governors that sit for nothing. That when an old wine will finish, I will not be part of the next program of God. Wrong spirits moving across the body of Christ. And we are happy. You watch them on TV. You like them. You admire them. Listen, I'm not teaching you to hate them. I do not hate any man of God as surely as the Lord lives. I have learned from different people. But I will not receive any spirit that is not of Christ. Are you listening to me? The Bible says Jesus humbled himself. Right now men of God just stand. And when you say Joshua Selman. They say me. You are calling me Joshua Selman. Of course, you can honor the anointing. You can honor the grace. You can honor the office. There's nothing wrong with that. But my name is not Apostle. My name is Joshua Selman. Are you listening to me? But you want to honor the anointing. And then you can honor the office. There's nothing wrong. But where it becomes that I am standing and considering it to be robbery. That's a spirit of error. And I tell you the truth. I tell you the truth. The judgment of God is coming. I tell you the truth. And there was no wine. And there were only servants. While Jesus was communicating with the servants, 
the masters of ceremony were there doing their religion to the point that they started serving the wine and the people did not know for servants will again ride on horses and princes will be surprised that they are walking afoot we are going to pray hallelujah there are four prayer points tonight before you rise up let me tell you the first prayer point is you're going to cry for yourself are you listening to me before you point hand at someone cry for yourself and say lord i pray that if there is anywhere i've opened up myself to the manifestation of deception either to my life or i'm doing it for others i obtain mercy especially for those of you in ministry are you listening to me then the second prayer point we are going to pray for the church of god the church of god in nigeria the church of god in zaria are you listening to me that the lord will set them free from the spirit of witchcraft and deception and manipulation and control number three we are going to pray for the ministers of god because listen to me the bible says whosoever will come he will in no wise cast away our ultimate goal is not that these people keep walking in deception until they die but that the lord will cause their eyes to be open that they stop that the men of god that go to shrines will stop that the men of god that lie and teach garbages in church will stop that the men of god who do not know the difference between righteousness and unrighteousness will stop hallelujah and then finally we are going to pray and tell the lord let the revelations come let the new one and say lord i want to be part of what you are doing rise up on your feet hallelujah instrumentalists please help me everybody. hallelujah we are going to pray scatter yourselves around this is prayer tonight we are going to pray the altar is open we are going to pray please we are praying right now hallelujah prayer point number one you are going to pray for yourself and say lord in the name of jesus i i close myself up to any manifestation of deception and i repent in any way that i've been involved deceiving people in manipulation in witchcraft lift your voice and pray come on pray pray generals Shake it, take it, balaraba. Man prata kapata balara. Man prato kapash. Man doko sopai. You sub in authority. Pray. Heads of department, pray. Ministers, pray. Koinonia, pray. Escorts of departments, pray. In the name of Jesus, I repent. Bateketo, reketekete. Man praska patekata. Make sure you are praying. Cry out to the Lord. Lord, we repent from the spirit of manipulation, the spirit of control, that domineering spirit that usurps authority over those you died for in the name of ministry. Come on, pray. Pray, saints of God. Pray, church of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're a man of God, or a woman of God, or a prophet, or an apostle, or a teacher that is a victim of this, I like you to pray. Pray. And say, Lord, I repent. I repent. I repent. I thought it was the honor of ministry. Mateka balarabash. Rakata bakata balaraba. Rapoto kosopa. Mampraste pariakata. Rakata balarabash. Emproskopete. Mateke posh. Mampreske bar. Maprosko posheba. Rekata balaraba. Rapa tekete. Mekoto sope. Rapa tapata balabara. Mampraste katai. I pray. I pray, I pray in the name of Jesus. I cast away the spirit of manipulation, the spirit of control out of my life. In the name of Jesus, I am blood washed. I'm a child of God. 
I'm a son of the king and the servant of the Lord Most High. Called to serve, called to serve the body of Christ. Make sure you are praying. The Lord is in this place. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm upon my holy mountain. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. We are going to pray. There are many churches in Nigeria. There are many churches in the north. There are many churches in Zaria that have been victims of manipulation. But the Bible says, Shall the captive be taken from the prey? It says, Even the lawful captive. Even the lawful captive. We are going to pray and say, Lord, let the veil be torn from the eyes of those who have been bent in deception. Deception, manipulation, witchcraft. Pray for the church. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, for the church. Lord, for the church. Lord, we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus. Make sure you are praying. Pray for your own church. Pray for your church. Pray for your parents' church. Pray for your brothers. Pray for your sisters in their churches. And say, Lord, have mercy. In the name of Jesus. Lord, let the fail be torn. We deliver our loved ones from the spirit of witchcraft the spirit of manipulation the spirit of control in the name of Jesus we set them free we set them free we set families free we set husbands free we set wives free we set students free we set pastors free we set apostles free we set prophets free in the name of Jesus. Make sure you are praying. Pray for your church. Pray for your brothers and sisters. Pray for the church in Zaria. Pray for the church in Zaria, the body of Christ in Zaria. Lord, we tear down walls of witchcraft. We tear down walls of manipulation. We tear down walls of control. We tear down walls of falsehood. We tear down walls of wickedness. Let God's people go. Let God's people go. Let God's people go. Hallelujah. 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 Are you ready for the next prayer point? You're going to pray for this man of God. Pray for us. Not them, us. Pray for us. Are you listening to me? Hold on. There are lots of ministers that the Holy Ghost has been telling them that what they are doing is wrong. There are many men of God who know that what they are doing is wrong. But when they stop it, 
who will feed them. That's what they say. Hallelujah. They teach on faith, but they do not believe what they teach. They teach on trusting God. They teach on tithing, but they don't tithe. They teach on divine health, they don't believe it. They teach on holiness and purity, but they do not believe it. Hallelujah. Some of your pastors are part of it. We are going to pray. Beginning from the house of Koinonia. Are you listening to me? You are going to pray for all the leaders. All the heads of department. Everybody pray for me. Pray for all of us. Listen. The Bible says, Let him that stands take heed, lest he falls. Are you listening to me? So, the issue is not trying to condemn the people. Beginning from us, who by grace are standing, we will pray for ourselves. He said, if a brother be caught in wrong, ye who are spiritual should correct him in the spirit of meekness. Being careful, lest you also fall into that temptation. Because many of those men started correctly. Are you listening to me? Many of you know your pastors, your prophets, your apostles. They started correctly. But because they were looking for money, or pride, or premature exposure to power, and money, and ministry influence. They have gotten themselves. We are going to say, Lord, we are snatching them. If you love them, at least they are, they are ministers of God. Lift your voice and pray. The house of Koinonia in Zaria, pray for your pastor. Lord, they will not be attracted to the demonic manifestations and the things that Satan will want to bring. Pray. Begin with the house of Koinonia. Pray for me. Pray for the ministers. Pray for the heads of departments. Pray for the executives. Pray for the members. Pray for your campus. Pray for all campus presidents. All faculty presidents. Pray for ministries. Kata kata ba 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 ba. Pray for all those who are already victims. Say, Lord, tonight, let your eyes open. Tonight, let the spirit of repentance come upon them. Come on, pray. Pray for your pastors. Pray for your apostles. Pray for your prophets. Pray for your leaders in your own church. And say, Lord, help them. Lord, help them. Deliver them from the spirit of witchcraft. Deliver them from usurping authority. Deliver them from manipulation. Deliver them from control. Pray. They may be genuine men of God. Most of them are genuine men of God. They love God. They truly love God. They truly love God. But wrong teachings, deceptive teachings, deceptive strategies for church growth, deceptive strategies for prosperity, deceptive strategies for fame and power. Pakata baba baba baba. Rekatos kepa. Brantoso pekata. Sente kreste kete. Oh, pray. If your father is a pastor, pray for him. If your mother is a pastor, pray for her. If your brothers and sisters are pastors, if your husband is a pastor, if your fiancé is a pastor, pray for them. Say, Lord, deliver them from deception. Deliver them from deception. Deliver them from destructive teachings. Destructive teachings. Destructive strategies. Parated on TV. Paraded in books. Paraded in tapes. Let righteousness. Let holiness. Let servanthood. Let true power. Let the grace of God. Find expression. Once again. Once again. In our churches. Once again. Let the gates of hell. Know that the church is alive. Once again. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. The revelation of Jesus Christ which he gave unto him that he should show unto his servants. We are going to pray and say, Lord, in this new move of the new wine of the Spirit, of new revelation of Jesus Christ and his power, I make myself a servant. Yes, I'm a son, I know. Yes, I'm a king, I know. Yes, I reign. But when it comes to responsibility, I remain the servant of the Lord Most High. Go ahead and pray for yourself. Say, I cast pride, fame, glory, self-seeking. Pray, we're rounding up. Pray, we're rounding up. Manto prastapa. Rapa teke tebosh. Pray for yourself. Lord, I remain a servant. No matter how much money you give me. No matter the fame. No matter the power. No matter the grace. No matter the crowd. No matter the influence. No matter the revelation. I remain a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. I will serve. I will serve. In the place of prayer, I will serve teaching the truth, rightly dividing the word. I will serve considering others better than myself, considering others better than myself, considering others. I will not struggle for the first place. I prefer the glory of others. I prefer the lifting of others. Shata Bakata Mam Pratakata. We are rounding up. Pray for yourself. I cast away pride. I cast away pride in the name of Jesus. I cast away pride. Fame glory. Boastful attitudes for nothing. I remain a servant in the name of Jesus. I remain a servant. The glory of the Lord is risen upon me. The glory of the Lord is risen. The word of the Lord to the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Say, blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound an alarm upon my holy mountain. Hallelujah. Listen to me. Listen to me. This is not a teaching for you to go to churches. And just sit down and be looking for the wrongs they are doing. We don't respond by criticizing and castigating and say, you see what Josh is saying. Wherever you go and you see it, pray for the people. Are you listening to me? This is not for you to take up an attitude. We are the ones who have the new revelation. And then you go and sit down. Because it will take a while for God to walk in the people. Are you listening to me? You must be patient with them. But you cannot justify what is being done. Pray for them. Where you have the opportunity, tell them. Tell them. That this is not consistent with the word of God. You have a pastor friend. Who is sleeping around. Drinking around. Doing everything. Tell him the truth. That we are serving the Lord God. A day will come God will judge the minister. Together with the work he has given him. Bible says, and every work shall be tried through fire. I am always conscious of this. You can call me a great man. You can call me an anointed man. But it is only God who has the true report of what I truly am. And it's his report I seek beyond the reports of men. If God commends me, even if men do not commend me, I am grateful. 
Are you listening to me? You do not reject the honor and the blessings of God. When you are walking in the path of God, people will bless you. They will bless you financially. People bless me with seeds. People bless the ministry. People bless the ministers. But never will a time come as surely as the Lord lives where we will begin to manipulate and control you. No. If we want an offering or if we are taking a special offering, we will tell you that we are taking a special offering for this. If we agree and we want everybody to sow some money, maybe God gives us an instruction. We will tell you. We will not begin to manipulate you with satanic things. It's better for us to innocently come and stand and say we are men of God. Do you believe in us? Raise an offering for us to bless us. It's more honest and honorable than coming to bring all kinds of prophetic lies and jargons. But as surely as the Lord lives, we believe in the word of God for ourselves. And God is faithful. Are you listening to me? Run away from all this sudden, quick, I want to be famous in one day. Instant breakthrough. Instant prosperity. God lifts people gradually. He teaches you how to manage success at every level. That's how God lifts people. If God gives you an instant miracle, I assure you the training was not instant. You must have been trained by God for a season. Except it did not come from God. Are you listening to me? Some of you are here, you are sitting and you are dreaming. You have sworn to yourself, I receive it. I will get a car next month. Sit down. Sit down and read your Bible very well. Because the room heater God gave you, you don't dust it, it's dirty, it's careless, it's, it's there, you don't clean it. The wires are torn, God will not give you a car. God will first teach you responsibility. He will teach you how to be grateful. He will teach you how to manage your stove and clean it well. He will give you an electric cooker. So the day he gives you a shop full of stuff, you remember the training. When David was anointed, he started by tending the sheep. Then he became the armor bearer of the king. He, I mean, he became his psalmist. He became the armor bearer. Then he came. And ye shall be witnesses in Jerusalem. Then it expands to Judea. Then it moves to Samaria. You don't just start to the ends of the earth. Don't let anybody deceive you with that thing. I see a lot of young ministers, especially some of all these campus people. They just get up and you see them listing 20 branches of their ministries. I am doing this. This is my secretary. This is my PA. This is my dad. You are my this. You are my dad. We are trusting God to buy a vehicle for the, the, the papa. Brothers and sisters, let the Lord help. Refuse these teachings. Don't castigate the people. Don't hate them. But you must be bold. I know some of you are ashamed of taking these things. But God will judge you if you know the truth. And you do not talk and you let your brother die. You must not be rude. But you need to politely let them know. If you don't just carry this tape and give them. At least let them hear my voice. It's me they will criticize. You are free. It's time the church of Christ will stand in for truth and righteousness. Are you listening to me? If you are here and you are sleeping around, repent. Sex is only for married people. No matter what message you have had, repent. You are here and you need counseling. You need someone to talk with you. Don't sit down and lie and say, I am a child of God. I am settled down, humble yourself and let the ministers talk to you. God is taking us somewhere. But the Bible says, he who conceals his sins, when you conceal your sin, there is no deliverance. Are you listening to me? Hate what is wrong. Remove all those dirty songs in your phone. Go and burn all those pornographic films and pictures that you have in your phone that you think it does not matter. Set it on fire this night and say, I stand for truth that I love God within and without Many people will say it does not matter. Let me tell you the Bible says, Nevertheless, the foundation of the Lord standeth sure. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. And let every man that named the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Say, but in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, of wood and of clay. God will never use Satan's method to bless you. No, sir. Are you listening to me? Tonight you know that you have 
captives that you have kept and bounded by every wrong doctrine. Go and release them this night. And say in the name of the Lord Jesus, we are ready to walk in truth. If you are a pastor, you are a campus fellowship leader, go and announce to your people that we come with a new spirit. We have come to serve. It doesn't mean you, you take people for granted. You come and meet me and carry your hand and rub my head, I will rebuke you. Hallelujah. Let me thanks. Every time we come before God and we stand in His presence and His holy place, I like for you to understand that is the equipping of the generals. Every time we stand, a revival is coming greater than the Phoenix revival, greater than the Azusa Street revival. Greater than all kinds of revivals put together. And that's why God is building us, equipping us every time by His Spirit. If you found yourself here tonight, it's not a mistake. You came as a deafening orchestration of this. Hallelujah. Very important. The Holy Ghost is in this place. To grant us the energy and the enablement we are drilling ourselves in the spirit because of Ephesians chapter 5 I want to show you something from God's word and we are going to pray that's how we are built by the ministry of the word and of the spirit the ministry of the word and of the spirit listen friends it's a sacrifice to become relevant in this generation there is a price to pay. And now we cannot keep pampering ourselves and just making ourselves look good and expect to shake our generation. It comes with a price. This is the price. The price of investment in the word and investment in the ministry of prayer. Hallelujah. That's how our fathers were equipped. That's how they were built. And if we must make a mark in the sands of time, then it's more than shouting and jumping. There must be a place of travail in the spirit. There must be sowing in the spirit. And arise from the dead and Christ shall give thee light. Verse 15. It says, see then that ye walk circumspectly. The word there is accurately. See that you walk in precision and accuracy. That means you can move, you can chart the course of your life. In accuracy and prison. No beating about the bush left, right and center. It says, see then that ye walk circumspectly. Not as fools, but as wise. Verse 16. One to read. Redeeming the time. Because the days are evil. Stop. The Bible lets us know that the days that we are living in, the days can be evil. And he tells us a secret. He says as believers. That we need to learn the principle of redeeming the time. Because the days are evil. I'm going to be sharing on redeeming the time very briefly and then we'll pray. Listen. There are many words that were interpreted time in scripture. But there are two of them that are of note tonight. One is called Kronos. And the other is called Kairos. Hallelujah. Chronos means the passage of time. That's where we get the word chronicles from chronos. Alright? So, it means the passage time. Your time that moves every day. And then there's another one called kairos. And kairos means the set time. The opportune time. The time of opportunity. Now, the difference between chronos and kairos is that kairos happens only once in a while. Hallelujah. And Kairos is such a prophetic time in any man's life. Such that when you maximize the Kairos moment, you can be victorious for a lifetime. And if you miss out on your Kairos moment, you may lose out for a very long time. And so here Paul is speaking a mystery to the Ephesian church. In light of the fact that they understand the progression of Kairos and Kronos, he says, redeem the time 
the word used there is the word kairos or chronos sorry the regular time redeemed he said because the days are evil look up please i always like giving this example when a student is in secondary school for instance just one just two just three is called chronos because whether he fails an assessment it really doesn't matter but when he gets to js3 the time of jsce for instance that's a kairos moment are you following me now because whatever he makes out of that exam will determine whether he will move to the next phase of his life are you following me now when he utilizes that kairos moment then he keeps going chronos and then he gets to a point where he's about to write ssc and not that kairos moment comes that can determine whether or not he will move to the next phase of his life are you following me now now the way god designed his system is such that satan does not have knowledge of kairos moments god designed it in such a way that satan has not been equipped with the knowledge to know when your prophetic time will come hallelujah that's what makes satan fearful about your life and so the only way he frustrates that opportune time is to make you waste your chronos because he understands that is the investment that you make in your everyday chronos that will account for the quality of delivery that will come when that prophetic time comes are you listening to me i'm trying to explain to you what paul is speaking to the church here he told them redeem your chronos in other words it may not look like he's counting now but there is a kairos time coming and it will come at a time that you may not even know but your investment in your chronos will prepare you for that prophetic time of your life see satan does not know the day and the hour when certain prophetic blueprints about your life will be open and so what happens he attempts to frustrate your chronos so that when the kairos moment comes you are not equipped to take out of it and so paul is speaking to the efficient church and he's telling them redeem your chronos because when the kairos moment comes is your degree of preparation the bible says for one year esther was utilizing her chronos because there was a kairos moment coming Are you follow me now that kairos moment was one night she would have the opportunity to make a mark of a lifetime and the bible is every day for one year she kept preparing anointing herself with all kinds of aloes and anointing oils and the bible said when that kairos moment came she passed the king just once and the king chose her and it was through her god brought liberty and emancipation to israel there are so many believers today that miss out on their prophetic timing because they are careless over their chronos hallelujah I want to explain to you why we spend time praying and we spend time drilling ourselves in the world because for every one of us it's like a shooting star it doesn't happen all the time but one day it will just happen and satan does not have knowledge of it and so it frustrates him because every time he sees you investing in your chronos he knows that you understand the principle are you seeing that so satan makes us lazy towards prayer lazy towards investing in the world and then when your kairos moment comes because you have not been sensitive to pick the signals of the spirit you are not able to adjust to the shift that comes into your life great men have been made today because they were equipped to understand the bible says the children of Issachar they had an understanding of their kairos moments and they knew what to do hallelujah and so when we take time to pray and invest in the spirit we are making quality investments preparing for our kairos david was preparing for his kairos with Goliath, and every day he kept building the wilderness he wasn't loitering around making noise his brothers were there feeling like big boys but he was there preparing for the kairos moment the opportune time you will not even know the bible says Saul was busy being diligent to his father little did he know that that diligence was a preparation for the anointing chronos because when the kairos moment comes 
we cannot take advantage of it that's why for many of you when your friends are going and you want to go god will draw you back i say sit down you say god but it's not fair god says i love you too much to allow your chronos your kairos time waste there are many of you that you wanted to go home god said stay back and you're like god leave me now and god said it's an investment because the kairos time is coming and hear me it will not announce itself to you is your degree of preparation he just carried food to go and give his brothers and he had a giant roaring but he had invested in his chronos and when he looked he was not afraid because he had done his assignment he killed a bear in his chronos he killed a lion in his chronos and when he looked at goliath he said who is this uncircumcised philistine the audacity that comes when you invest in your chronos there are many of you God is building you and the day God will announce you is one day as you're moving a madman will just meander your way on that day the investment on your chronos will speak you may not look like it now but hear me there is a training there is a building and Paul tells the Ephesian church he says redeem the time don't waste your time salvage it invest in it when others are wasting their time realize you are not going to the same place there is destiny inside of you and for that reason constrain yourself yes I know it's painful but it's the sacrifice that makes you a champion every minister of God you see sitting here and for the ministers around any noticeable grace of God you see upon their life came as a result of quality investments in the time of their corners and God orchestrated events to announce them one day all this ministry thing that people want to announce themselves that's nonsense I keep saying it the greatest publicity of a believer is to remain in your secret place building yourself for that Kairos moment hallelujah when you spend time in prayer you spend time building yourself with the word you will equip yourself to a point that you'll be so full of the holy ghost the bible talks about stephen he was one of the seven deacons that were chosen to address the issue of food but he was building himself and a time came from serving food he became such a miracle worker the first martyr I will not deceive you friends if you want to make a mark in the sands of time then let when when pain is a burden to you then you are not ready to emerge a champion away with all these soft nice things just make you feel cool under an AC wonderful but let me tell you not for generals when you are ready to emerge everybody knows that the birth of anything valuable is painful that will be of value that's why when we come we take quality time investing in the spirit hallelujah let me show you something in the book of Galatians thank you Holy Spirit Galatians chapter 6 verse 8 to read be not deceived God is not God but whatsoever a man sows that shall hear him stop does that scripture make you fear that God is saying don't let anybody deceive you don't ever expect to read anything you have not sown we are not talking about money are you listening to me many people want we want power we want grace they do so of sowing into your life the bible says do not be deceived why God cannot be mocked whatsoever in other words if Aaron becomes a champion today we cannot say it's by mistake we know what happened any success that does not have a process is a mirage any success that does not have a process 
And people ask you, I don't know what I did. In the harvest of the times of Whatsoever a man sows, that will he reap. Let's read the next verse. It says, For, in other words, in continuation to that previous verse, for he that soweth to his flesh will of the flesh reap what? Let me show you how to sow to the flesh. Look up. When you spend 8 o'clock in the morning till 10 p.m. watching Nigerians. You may not like me this night, oh, but I love you too much. I will force destiny and greatness out of you. When you spend time just loitering around left, right, and center and not staying in God's word, when you spend time just doing anything, you know what you are doing? You are sowing to the flesh. Hear me? You will of the flesh reap corruptible things. But the Bible says, he that soweth, um, how does it say it? He said, but he that soweth to the spirit, how do you sow in the spirit? In the place of prayer, you are making spiritual investments because they are not investments that are tangible. They are not investments in the bank where you can go and say, give me back my money. They are spiritual investments and they are the most powerful kinds of investments. So as you spend time in the secret, saying, Lord, how amiable are your laws. They are my meditation all day long. The Bible said the secret of the Lord belongs to them that fear him. Not to believers, to them that fear him. There is a kind of reverence you give God that will cause him to commit certain secrets. Hallelujah. The Bible says, he that sows to the spirit, will of the spirit reap life eternal it's not talking about the eternal life you received when you were born again will receive all the spiritual blessings that come as a byproduct of quality investments hallelujah we need to start paying attention to our spiritual investments i've said it and i'll say it again you mustn't you can ask my brothers to bear witness when you come to our house Mm. the only thing you'll find is worship songs and sermons now I don't have any problem against movie I don't have any problem against anything no 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 what I'm saying is the price we have chosen to pay for the kind of destiny we expect don't see me blessed tomorrow and say God loves some people it's not true I'm showing you the secret of a life of undeniable impact irrespective of your age irrespective of your gender if you sow to the spirit if you sow to the spirit you sow to the spirit your profiting will appear unto all he told his son Timothy in 1 Timothy chapter 4 I think verse 15 he says meditate on these things give yourself only to them your profiting will appear unto all the trouble is Many of us like feeling comfortable. We like feeling comfortable. Don't disturb me. Don't bug me to pray. Don't bug me to study the word. Please, I'm not like that. Me, I just study the word for five minutes, praying in tongues for five minutes. Let's see the kind of harvest that comes. The Bible says, He that soweth sparingly shall reap sparingly. Don't just take it to money alone. He that soweth in prayer sparingly shall reap results sparingly. He that soweth bountifully shall reap bountifully. Hallelujah. And I want us to get results. The message tonight is that we must spend time sowing in the spirit. People will laugh at you. They will call you, what do they call you ladies? Mother Mary, S you. Let me tell you something. Those who are laughing at you today will laugh with you tomorrow. Hallelujah. If you are ashamed of it, how many of you have seen a pregnant woman ashamed? When a lady is pregnant, sometimes he so shapes her face. But who cares? Didn't you see her before she got pregnant? But it's because she's carrying something. 
And so sometimes she may have to bend in certain postures that are uncomfortable. But she knows that it's a prize. And you can stand and be gisting about it. But she's carrying something. The day she gives birth, you come and greet her. And the issue is you will not come empty-handed. The same you who was laughing. And when she gives birth to twins or triplets. Are you getting my message tonight? There are many of us when we say pray. You're just trying to check if your wevon has shifted. <laughs> Let me tell you. If that's how your understanding of the investment for destiny is. Then you are still playing. Hallelujah. Or you are checking your clothes and say ah this material. We must wake up and get serious with our lives. It says, He that sweat to the flesh will of the flesh with corruption. We're going to take some time and pray in the spirit. Hallelujah. Tonight is a prayer meeting. We are sowing to the spirit. You may say, What are we saying? We are making spiritual investments. The Holy Ghost is going to be praying certain things. Please, everybody stand. And tonight you are not praying in your heart. Your ears must hear what your mouth is saying. We are going to pray. Hallelujah. Go ahead. If your chair is discomforting you, walk around. Because we are not going to stop in the next 10 minutes. So you better get set. Go ahead and let's pray. Come on. Pray in the spirit. Walk around. Walk around. Spiritual investments. Make sure you are praying. Friends, it's an investment. It will speak for you. Please don't be tired. Please don't stop. It's for your destiny. 
to me. Hallelujah. Now, hear me. I'm going to be showing you relevant scriptures. Are you listening to me? Concerning every major areas of our lives. Hallelujah. And then, when we pray these scriptures, we'll pray in the spirit. We need to have victories in our lives. Enough of just receive, receive. No. This, we are going to do it in the world. This is the kind of training that lasts. Hallelujah. Look at me. I want to start with the guys. Concerning your life, your well-being, your marriage, your wife. Should I show you one scripture? Never forget it. Psalms 128. All the gentlemen turn to that scripture. We are going to pray. We are in a prayer meeting tonight. If you are tired, you can go. But we are in a serious prayer meeting tonight. Psalms 128. Instrumentalists, don't stop. Your ministry tonight is very, very important. Psalm 128. Are you there? Now, all the gentlemen, let's read it. One to read. Blessed is everyone that feareth the Lord, that walketh in his ways. For thou shalt eat the labor of thy hands. Happy shalt thou be, and it shall be well with thee. Verse 3. Thy wife shall be as a fruitful vine by thy sides of thy house. Thy children like olive plants round about the table. Stop from verse 4. Verse 4. Behold, that thus shall the man be blessed who feareth the Lord. Look at me. When you find a scripture like this and draw the life out of it, for every man here, you can see from this scripture that it says you will reap the labor of your hands. It says your wife shall be. That means you will get married. Hello? That solves that problem of beating around the bush. It says walk circumspectly, accurately, by the word of God. It said your children. That means you will not know barrenness. No, it's the truth. That's what the word of God says. It says when you see this thing, that's the portrait of a man who God has blessed. Ladies, are you ready? Go to Isaiah 34. And let me show you something. Many of you who think you get married because you are fine, you better change your mind and get a relevant scripture for your destiny. Isaiah. Cabria capo chatalian bretista. Ibram po chabra catalana cosabai. Isaiah 34. Are you there, ladies? Verse 16. Let's read. One to go. Seek out of the book of the Lord and read. None of these shall fall, shall fail. None shall lack her mate. For my mouth has spoken it. My spirit has gathered it. Are you seeing there? So, for every lady, the Bible says, when you seek out of the book and read, part of the promise there is that none shall want her mate. That permanently solves the issue of marital insecurity. Hallelujah. Are you ready to pray now? So, all of us, are, I don't know why we are starting with that dimension. We are going to pray in the spirit. Guys, ladies, we are praying in light of this scripture. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Come on, pray. Tell yourself, I have a blessed home. I have a blessed life. So I'm showing today. No fight between husband and wife. No quarreling. But we have to show. We are sowing the seed today. Make sure you pray. Make up that Italian Delemosa. Marco Proto Shopreke Telemos. Don't let the devil make you feel it doesn't matter. It matters to everyone here. Gara take a bala de Bacassia. Am Breke Paria Tabalaba. Reke Telepoco Sobegerebosa. Le Cara Tabatasha. Am Prata Variata. Eke Reto Sobegerebosa. Mali Prata Sikaya. Am Breke de Baroso. Roco Topegade. E Cresha. Dan Palia Tabata. E Proto Sobegerebosa. Come on, pray. 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 As some of you are praying, you terminate every cost that is upon you from your family it doesn't matter where it's coming from when you stand in light of the world satan is helpless 
Jesus died to bring the reality of redemption and because of his death, his burial and resurrection by the shed blood of his son, we are victorious and the word of God is alive and keeping our spirits. My home is blessed. My life is blessed. Hallelujah. 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 Listen. For many of us who have found ourselves searching and saying, Lord, I need divine direction in my life. Isaiah 30. Isaiah chapter 30. Take note of these scriptures. They are powerful scriptures coming from the spirit. We are so in in the spirit. I give you a guarantee. We will of the spirit reap soteria. Health, life, blessings, increase. Isaiah 30. Verse 21. We are reading it together, all of us. Verse 21. Want to read. And thine ears shall hear a word behind thee saying, This is the way. Walk ye in it. When ye turn to the right hand, and when ye turn to the left. Stop. God gives you an assurance. He said, Your ears will hear. Your ears shall hear a voice saying, This is the way. Walk ye in it. Turn right, turn left. The Bible says, Walk accurately. Circumspectly. He's made provision. No more confusion in your life. Lift up your voice and pray. I hear the voice. I hear the voice in my dreams, in visions, in my spirit. I hear the voice. Come on, pray. Concerning your job, concerning your employment, concerning your relationship, concerning your business, concerning your family, concerning your academics, concerning your ministry, you will hear that voice. My sheep hear my voice. My sheep hear my voice. I put it within their spirit, the capacity to hear my voice. Come on, pray. Travel in the spirit. I hear a voice in my business. I hear a voice in my ministry. I hear a voice bringing ideas. I hear a voice bringing inspiration. I hear a voice bringing direction. The voice of the spirit. The voice of the spirit. My spirit is able to recognize his voice. Make sure you are praying. Make sure you are praying. You will rest after the prayers, but not during the prayers. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A scripture concerning your health. Ha. Romans. Romans chapter 8. Was sowing in the spirit. The days that are coming will require us to live in divine health. There's a lot to do for the kingdom. Are you there? Romans 8. There is an activity of the Holy Ghost that happens in your mortal body and it has the capacity to keep you in health. Listen, every word you hear tonight will be tried one day and you will be alone to defend it. When you are a student, when you are about to graduate, there's something called defense. When you prove to them 
that you know what you were doing in your project in life there is defense to move to the next level Satan came one day to tempt Jesus and Jesus said it is written it is written it is written concerning your health hear me especially for those of us who are who sends the call of God upon our lives to be in active ministry you need this revelation otherwise you collapse one day on stage when you stand and minister for hours and you don't have the time to rest if this is not a revelation you minister in the rain in the cold in the heat you travel to places you are exposed to all kinds of pests you've got to have this scripture the Bible says Peter at a time a viper just beat his hand and the Bible I mean Paul sorry he said he just shook it and ah, dimensions in his he understood that there was an activity of the Holy Ghost in his body listen I hope that these realities are, are agreeing with your spirit because if you are still arguing and say ah, this thing self, listen don't be discouraged even if you are running to the hospital every day no one condemns you you are a student on training one day you will conquer so don't feel discouraged no there's no reason to be discouraged that's why we are here jesus said come and i will make you hallelujah romans chapter 8 Verse 11. Verse 11. Are you ready? Want to read? But if the spirit of him that raised up Christ from the dead dwells in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also give life. Give life. Give energy. Hear me? Listen. Let me explain that scripture before we pray. Here was the dead body of Jesus. I need you to understand that it was the Holy Ghost who made Jesus a seed. He actually turned the world into a seed. He is that powerful. He turned the second person of the Trinity, made him a seed and put him in the womb of a woman. Now here was Jesus lying dead. And on the third day, the Bible says that same spirit came and entered into that body and caused him to come alive. Hear me. I hope you know that Jesus resurrected without blood because his blood had been drained what magnificent ability of the spirit because when he resurrected there were still holes all over his body but he was still alive now the bible says in that same spirit dwells not in your spirit in your body listen listen i hope that as you are jumping you are catching this in your spirit that same spirit will revitalize there is a quickening there is an ability in your spirit if it's cancer it can die if it's your genotype it can change it believe it believe it if it were not possible god will not write it on the wall lift up your voice and pray in the spirit for my health i make a spiritual investment
We're going to pray over our minds. There are many people that have been lied to by the devil. That your capacity to think and be intelligent is, is faulty. Tonight we are calling Satan a liar. Are you hearing me? But it's not just to say Satan you are a liar. Jesus said no, no. It will not bring you the results. Job chapter 32 verse 8. Job 32 verse 8. Job 32 verse 8. If you're there, let's read it. One to read. It says there is a spirit in man. And so men don't just understand. It's the inspiration of the Almighty that maketh men of understanding. Hallelujah. You're going to pray and say from tonight, I, I enter a realm of intellectual intelligence capacity to understand are you following me now go ahead and begin to pray in the spirit your mind can bring ideas supernatural ideas from the holy ghost Supernatural ideas. Come on, pray. Pray over your mind. My mind is blessed. I reason in the capacity of the spirit. Supernatural ability to birth ideas. Ideas that will change my family. Ideas that will change my life. Business ideas. Ministry ideas. Technological ideas. It's within your reach. The inspiration of the Almighty. There are some of you who are receiving ideas by the Spirit. Enlarged capacity. By the Spirit tonight. Hallelujah. 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 Look at me. A lot of people are running helter skelter. Recession, recession. Ah, recession, my finances. No, sir. A believer does not behave like that. Turn with me to the book of Job. Let me show you an interesting scripture. Job chapter 5. Let the fear of recession, even if they bomb the whole world, your audacity is in the integrity of the word of God. Let me tell you, businesses are failing, stocks are crashing, things are happening all over. But for the believer, there is provision that gives us security. People are dying of high blood pressure every day because they do not build their lives. They build their lives around money, not around the word of God. Are you ready? Respect these scriptures that the Lord is showing you. Job chapter 5, verse 19. Listen. Job chapter 5, verse 19. He shall deliver thee in six troubles. 
yea in seven there shall no evil touch you number one in famine he shall redeem thee from death in war from the power of the sword so why are you afraid of tomorrow's election listen you must learn to build your life on the integrity of God's word one time I think in 2007 or so I was coming back from Port Harcourt and we were in a luxurious bus and while I was coming back they were robbers I don't know where but they were I mean and I was sitting C2 in the luxurious bus so if they were going to shoot it's me they will meet first before because the drivers you know how luxurious buses are and they put this barricade that they, this metallic thing that when your tire match so that you have to stop and everybody was shouting the name of whatever he believes in the car and I was asleep but then when I woke up there was absolute peace a scripture just came in my spirit he shall keep them in perfect peace whose minds are still hallelujah and guess what happened true life story did I share this story with you I think he knows the story and if Jamfa were around, you would bear me witness. Our car matched those metallic things. Those robbers could not shoot. They couldn't do anything. That's how they were watching till we passed. See, you are a supernatural being. Realize it. The problem is, we are always watching Paloma. And so, our minds are bent like carnally minded. We must be alive to the spirit. Hallelujah. Number two, uh, verse 21. Thou shalt be hidden from the scourge of the tongue. So how many of you, they spoke against me from the village. Can you see there? The Bible says, I will deliver you from this thing. No devil can speak against me. From where? See, but hear me. Sorry, just one minute. Until those scriptures become a reality, what they are saying will follow you. That's why there are a lot of believers who have not taken out time to eat the word. And they're just saying, ah, I'm safe. But it's obvious that your life is showing that those things are still following you. Are you hearing me? So before you say, I'm free, make sure the word is in your spirit. A lot of people say, ah, me, God forbid, I will do this. People die now. But you see yourself, stay with the word. When you are full of the word, then it gives you the audacity to declare. Exousia, you can speak as touching the authority of Christ. But until you've stayed in the, if you've not stayed in the secret place, don't be shouting up and down. He said, I will deliver you, verse 21, from the scourge of the tongue. So all of those things people talk about, my father's side, my mother's side. And you know, hear me friends, let's be, let's be spiritually alive. Because we live in a generation where people don't want to pay the price and find out what the word of God has said. We like running to every prophet here and there. And he says, okay, uh, this and that. Let me go to my prayer room. You see a man doing divination and you're still comfortably crossing your legs there. And he comes out and gives you one word of knowledge. Hey, it's true, Baba, it's true. Everything happened that way. And, you know, you do all this nonsense. And they tell you, okay, go and bring 100,000. Buy this, buy that, buy this. And believers foolishly go and do those things. Then when it backfires, they come to the ministers and they don't tell all the stories. They just say the one that makes them innocent. There is a more sure word of prophecy, greater than any prophet's word, the word of God. Are you getting blessed? So stop loitering around left, right, and what will happen to my life? Will I die or will I not die? The Bible says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Say it, God of good and not of evil to bring you a future and an expected end let's hurry up the bible says thou shalt be hidden from the scourge of the tongue neither shalt thou be afraid of destruction when it cometh he said at destruction and famine thou shalt laugh that's the word of god and right now there's destruction and famine that means you ought to be laughing See, the word of God intoxicates. It gives you an audacity. When men don't understand, they think you are arrogant. You are not arrogant. You are just covered. Hallelujah.
Do you believe the word of God? You believe the things we are doing here? Let me tell you, when you build your life around the word of God and you sow the seed of prayer, you sow the seed of the word, you will imagine, you will be fearful. People just look at you, an ordinary man just moving around. But you are not as ordinary as they look. They see supernatural things happening to your life. And men say, how come this is happening? There's no magic about it. He that soweth to the flesh will of the flesh in response to your giving Sorry. Sorry about that. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 12. He said, Lest thou, when thou hast eaten and art full of houses, and built goodly houses, and dwell therein. And when thy herds and thy flocks multiply, and thy silver and thy gold are multiplied, and all that thou hast said, then thou, then thy heart shall be lifted up, and thou forget the Lord who brought you out from the land of Egypt, who led you that, 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 and then verse 17. And thou shalt say in thy heart. So that's the first thing to avoid. A lot of people get blessed and they say in their heart, my intellect, my power, my ability to do business. Really? He said, and thou shalt say in thy heart that my power and my might has brought me this good. When you have avoided that arrogance by recognizing that Lord without you, I am nothing. He said, then thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. For it is he that gives you the anointing, the ability, the capacity to produce wealth. The ability to produce wealth is not money falling from heaven. If you wake up and see money supernaturally appear in your wallet, it's just a sign. It will not continue like that every day. That ability, concepts, ideas, insights. Many of us want money. No, money will not come. Money is a response when you obey certain principles that God has put. Hallelujah. So thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power. So you, you don't get the power from Babala or anybody. The Lord gives you the power to get wealth. Isaiah, quickly. Isaiah chapter 45. Isaiah 45 verse 2 and 3 I call them my golden scriptures for finances 
unbeatable irrefutable principles golden scriptures three legs of a chair you can sit down for a hundred years on this scripture and your finances will not shake one bit i give you a guarantee mm. verse two i will go before thee and make the crooked places straight so it's not your responsibility to make it many people have been trying to straighten their path and they are dying by them god said i will do it he says i will break in pieces the gates of bronze and cut in sunder the bars of iron three let's read together one to read and i will give you stop did he say you will get i will give you it's a gift we don't realize he said i will give you i will give you the treasures of darkness read on and the hidden riches of secret places there are hidden riches it takes the spirit of god to show you you will look like this and not see anything lot looked at the land and he saw a land near sodom and when he carried it there was no more land god told abraham now look and abraham saw land where was it before that 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 is that his brother didn't see i will give you the treasures of darkness and the hidden riches of secrets i will show you what button to press i will direct you and show you things that will make you a fearful wonder all these struggle believers do is because we do not know how to sit with the word of god and understand his principles the last scripture isaiah 48 mm. these scriptures are so dear to my life Isaiah 48 I have to hurry up Isaiah 48 verse 17 are you there verse 17 read on everybody want to read I am the Lord that teaches thee how many of you have done tutorials have you gone for tutorials you know how they teach you god says i am the one who can teach you those of you in business don't kill yourself i am the lord that teaches thee to profit ah. if you are not taught you will never know you will struggle for nothing and die crying i am the lord that teaches thee i understand the art of making profit i will teach you that's what the lord says three powerful scriptures there are many others but sufficient are these three now go ahead and pray and say lord you have said you will give me the treasures of darkness and the hidden riches of secret places many of you will receive them as ideas supernatural ideas you must believe it and if you do go ahead and begin to pray pray in the spirit say lord i was born in a family that has been challenged financially now is the time there must be evidence that I have been with you. It must show in my finances and that of my family. There must be evidence that I have participated with you in communion. Hallelujah. Go ahead and pray. Lord, let there be a supernatural release of ideas, concepts, insights. Teach your people how to profit. Direct them by the Spirit of the Lord. Only you are able to do this. We can try. We can try and try. Hallelujah. See. Are you seeing why it's important to build your life around the word? Because you can fail as a person, but the word of God that backs you cannot fail. So to the spirit. Let me tell you, these principles of God have no respect for gender, no respect for age. I tell you the truth, at any level, when you believe them and begin to live by them, your profiting will appear unto all. It may take a while in the time of building, but it won't be too long. Your diligence will speak. It's the truth. It's the truth. Hallelujah. Thank you for lifting. 
Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. grace so that I will come I will make this a habit to invest in the spirit listen 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 get your phones fill them with scriptures fill them with messages by the grace of God some of these messages are free that's why we make them free the aim is not profit the aim is for lives to be changed get these things can take a day just buy fruits make fruit salad that you take so that it doesn't just fill your stomach and make you sleep and be snoring but just enough so hunger doesn't keep ringing on your head and sit with the word and say lord i am ready to take responsibility a lot of believers are still blaming the government blaming everybody they are chopping our money blaming everybody our parents are doing this they are doing this and that when you are ready to change your life will change many people are waiting for god god is waiting for us the anointing is for your reach the blessings of the lord is for your reach but you must take responsibility the issue is not just a job you need the word that's what will give you victory my son pay attention to my words incline your ears to my say do not let them depart from your eyes keep them in the midst of your heart says they are life to those who find them health to their flesh hallelujah go ahead and pray grace lord grace grace upon me to pray until something changes about my life grace to study the word the destiny of a generation is upon my shoulders grace to sow to sow in the spirit to travel dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages, subscribe to the channel, comment on it, like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. the face of development lord grant me the discipline